It's happening. It's that time of year again. The time where I show you guys my entire sneaker collection. A huge, unnecessarily large, ridiculously unwearable sneaker collection. I don't know if you guys knew where I was going with that, but that's where I was going. And in today's video, I'm going to show you every single one of the shoes that I own. And just like every other year that I've done this video, I'm going to try and get rid of a lot of the sneakers that I'm showing in today's video. So this is sort of like a video archive of my collection at the end of 2022. I was looking back at some of my older sneaker collection videos and I said, I'm going to sell like most of the collection and keep like 20 pairs, which never happens. In fact, I say it in every single video and it never happens. But this time around, I'm going to try and do it again. This time it should be different though, because this year I teamed up with today's sponsor, Whatnot. So at this point, I'm sure you've heard of Whatnot. A lot of sneaker YouTubers and just YouTubers in general have been talking about it. Whatnot is a live auction shopping platform that has auctions 24 hours a day and sneaker auctions starting as low as just $1. In fact, all of the shoes that I'm auctioning in my next Whatnot live stream, which is linked in the top of the description below, I'm gonna start at just $1. I'll also have some sneakers available for buy it nows and of course I'll be doing some giveaways. So if you guys wanna check that out, click that link at the top of the description below. It's coming up in the next couple days and if you sign up for Whatnot using my link, you get $10 to towards your first purchase, which means if you're new to Whatnot and you grab something on my Whatnot live stream, you get $10 off your purchase. So if you guys wanna check out this huge sneaker collection Whatnot live stream, it's taking place next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's Tuesday the 20th, I believe. So if you guys wanna check it out, click the link in the top of the description below, sign up for Whatnot and bookmark my live stream. But with all that being said, let's dive right into the entire collection and make sure to sit back and relax because this is gonna be a, a pretty long video. So the way I'm gonna go about doing this video is by showing you guys all of my sneakers by brand. I feel like that's just the best way to do it categorically and I'm gonna start off with the brands that I have less pairs of sneakers of and to start things off we've got this pair of um, a live form 3D printed shoes. I know it's a wild looking sneaker. As you guys know, recently I've been getting really into 3D printing and not only 3D printing my own shoes, which I designed, which I'll show you guys a couple of in a couple seconds, but also 3D printed shoes from other brands. And this is one of the wildest, actually most comfortable 3D printed shoes I've ever worn. It kind of looks like a caterpillar that's been like scrunched. Uh, it's a little dark, but cool looking sneaker, pretty wild to wear. And every time I throw this sneaker on, people are like, what is that? And to be fair, that's the main reason that I wear this shoe because I love how insane it looks. Continuing on with the 3D printed shoes, I've got the Heron Preston 01 by Zellerfeld. This is probably the most well-rounded 3D printed shoe I've ever seen. This shoe was manufactured by Zellerfeld in Germany. I believe Zellerfeld also did the 3D printed boots that Kanye was seen wearing like six months ago. But this shoe is insane, not only because of the wild color that Heron Preston decided to use on this shoe, but also because different parts of the shoe feel different from one another, even though the shoe is made up of one piece. So the way that this shoe is printed is that the bottom half of the shoe is a little bit more stiff but also pretty bouncy and the top half of the shoe is super flexible and super soft. It's crazy that you can do this sort of stuff with 3D printing. It blows my mind and that's why I'm so into 3D printing. And I honestly feel like 3D printing might be the way of the future when it comes to sneakers because you can come up with a shoe idea, design it on your computer really quickly and then print it out and then literally wear it the next day. So seeing stuff like this is pretty exciting for the future. But now let's get into some of my 3D printed shoes which I probably should have shown first because they're nowhere near as finished as some of the 3D printed shoes that I just showed you, but the first pair that we've got, which maybe could have gone in the Yeezy section, are my 3D printed Yeezy slides. This is just one of the shoes that I 3D printed for my 3D printed Yeezy slide video. This is a glow in the dark pair. The only one that actually fit. I still have all the other Yeezy slides that I printed, but um, this was the only one that I actually liked and would actually wear. Not that I'm going to, but the next shoe that we have is the oversized 3D printed Air Jordan 1. This shoe is stupid and ridiculous, but I was able to get my foot into it and wear it even though it was not very comfortable. I really only did this shoe to see if you could 3D print a wearable pair of Air Jordan 1s from a file that I found online. And uh, the answer is yes but you look stupid wearing this, so don't. Next up, we've got my first 3D printed shoe that I ever made for the channel. This is a pair that I actually 3D printed on my Prusa printer and then wore for about a week to SneakerCon and places like that. And this video did really well. I was really surprised by how much you guys enjoyed it, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. But this shoe is very uncomfortable, pretty ugly, but it got a lot of attention and that's what I wanted for the video. So definitely a fun shoe to design and 3D print and uh, one that I'm probably never gonna wear again because it hurts. Next up, and the last 3D printed shoe that I'm gonna show you guys, this is a skateboarding shoe that I designed specifically for Braille Skateboarding, the YouTube channel. The whole story behind this shoe is pretty insane. Just the amount of effort it took to make this shoe and then I flew out to California to meet Braille and had them skate it. This isn't the actual one that they skated, they kept that one. This is my own prototype version of the shoe. But it's definitely a video worth watching if you like Braille or 3D printed shoes. It was a lot of fun. And honestly, I like this design so much that I considered printing out another pair for myself uh, because this pair, this prototype, is only one side of the pair and it doesn't fit. So, 
there's that. I guess keeping up with the theme of shoes that I designed, these are all the shoes that I designed, uh, most of which with We Are Underdogs. This other guy right here is a pair that I did for Planners Peanuts and VaynerMedia like three or four years ago. I designed it and then I believe Garrison created it. Really cool shoe, if you guys wanna check it out, I did a video like three or four years ago, which I designed in collaboration with We Are Underdogs. This was my signature shoe. This is the original Origin colorway, the very first Seth Fowler Origin with my signature on the back. And then my favorite of the five different colorways is this guy right here, the Asphalt colorway. I designed it in collaboration with Jason Negrito Diaz. He did the colorway, I did the shoe. I think it came out really, really well. And then the last shoe that I designed that's actually come out is the We Are Underdogs Seth Fowler Granite. I love the way that it looks, I like the colors that we went with. Actually, while we're on the topic of things that I've made or been involved in making, my sock brand Apothecary is dropping an insane collection this Wednesday. First off, we've got some pretty insane basic tees that we're dropping, which I'm so excited about. They're part of our essentials collection. They come in four different colorways. My personal favorite is the one that I'm wearing right now. It's called Vintage Black, but all of the colorways are fire. And I've actually been wearing them secretly for the last month just to test them out to make sure that you guys are getting the highest quality product available. And I'm not just saying that because it's my own brand. These shirts are incredibly high quality. Not only that, we're also dropping the brand new Pretty Much Broke hoodie, which of course matches the hat. We've got the logo on the front, we've got the logo on the back, and then my favorite detail is actually the embroidered apothecary logo right there in the sleeve. And then the final thing that we're dropping is our New Year's Eve sock collection. It comes with New Year's Eve 23s on the side, and each one of these 23 numbers actually change color in UV light. So once you step outside, they're gonna change colors and it looks insane. And personally, I'm so excited about 2023 because 2023 is the year of the sneaker head. So not only are we getting some fire socks for 2023, but hopefully some fire sneakers as well. But of course, if you guys want to grab any of the stuff that I just showed you guys, it all drops officially on apothecary.com this Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I guess next up, let's jump into some more YouTube collaboration shoes. This is the No Two Way sneaker in collaboration with Calux. I think he actually owns half of the company. They've sent me all the different colorways of the shoe. Most of them are at the apothecary office. I have three colorways in my house. In fact, this colorway, they literally just sent me today. Super cool looking shoe. I think it's one of the best shoes from a non big brand like Adidas or New Balance or anyone like that that's dropped recently. I think they absolutely killed it. And this army green colorway, I don't remember the exact name of the shoe, is really fire. I wear it all the time. And I think this baby blue or sky blue colorway that they just sent over might join my rotation pretty quickly because I think this is a really fire colorway. So shout out to No Two Ways. Thank you for all the sneakers. I appreciate it. Next up, we've got the Mischief Gob Stompers. This is the second colorway of the shoe, the sour colorway. I did a video destroying this sneaker and uh, unfortunately, not too happy with the way it came out. I didn't do a very good job. And I feel like Mischief is just a master of creating just insane looking sneakers that do crazy things. And this is obviously an example of that. Next up, we've got the John Geiger Martell collaboration. John Geiger is a designer that I really look up to in the sneaker community. He does some pretty amazing stuff. Shout out to John Geiger. He kills it. His design work is amazing. Another designer that I look up to a lot is Mosh. Mosh is one of the most famous sneaker customizers of all time. And now he has his own sneaker, the Centralia. This is the first colorway of the shoe. I grabbed this when it first released. And honestly, last year it was one of my most worn sneakers. I haven't worn it as much this year. Not because I don't like it, but honestly because I've just bought too many sneakers this year. So I haven't really had a chance to rock it as much. But this colorway is insane. The materials used on this sneaker are also really, really high quality. I recommend it. I think it's worth it. They last forever too. Like this shoe's gone through a lot and it still looks pretty new. Another shoe that I have from a smaller startup brand is this pair of shoes from Keto Wear. I don't know exactly what to call this. It's not a slide. It's not, it's kind of a clog, but uh, yeah, it's definitely inspired by some sort of skull. It's a pretty wild looking sneaker. My nephew loves dinosaurs. So I wear this whenever I'm with my nephew. I think it's pretty cool. So definitely a cool shoe and uh, surprisingly comfortable, even though it's pretty heavy. Next is actually my only pair of Under Armors, which is kind of wild. And that's this pair of Under Armour basket, basketballs. I'm not sure exactly which pair this is. I think this is from a couple years ago. But this shoe is a custom Joel Embiid pair that I got from, uh, I forget who did it, but they did a great job customizing it. It's got some of his jersey on the actual tongue of the sneaker, which I think is pretty insane. Obviously, I'm a huge Sixers fan and Joel Embiid is probably my favorite player on the Sixers. I mean, I think he's most people's favorite player on the Sixers because he's just that dude right now. I mean, all the Sixers are awesome. I love George Niang. I love Thibault. I love, obviously, James Harden. I love Tyrese Maxey. I'm just gonna go down the list. I love all the Sixers. They're all killing it. Love Daryl Morey. Everyone's doing a great job. And uh, yeah, I think this is a great looking sneaker. I've never worn it because I consider it to be more of an art piece than anything else. I should probably put it somewhere, you know, in the studio, but I haven't found a place yet, so. I guess keeping with the theme of custom shoes, I've got this insane custom pair of dunks by The Remade. It's in collaboration with Nick The Real. The Remade does some insane customs, and it's not like a painted custom. He literally sews them from the ground up, and this shoe is absolutely insane. I don't have the other side, of, it's over there somewhere, but the other side of the pair comes in alternating colors, so where it's white on this shoe, it's red on the other shoe. It's a super crazy looking concept. Worn it a couple times, feels great, and the padding's actually better than an actual pair of Nike dunks, so shout out to The Remade for killing it. After that, we move into my Vans.
Vans, which right now I don't have a lot of pairs of. I've got this special limited edition half cab, which I actually have skated in. Not that I skate a lot, but I did practice a bunch before I went to Braille, just to not look like an idiot. And the good news was is that I didn't skate there, so I didn't look like an idiot, and I also didn't have to practice, but there you go. And then I've also got the classic Vans old schools in black. Speaking of skateboarding shoes, I've got the Braille skate shoe, which I actually bought to do the video because I wanted to 3D print a version of this shoe, in addition to the pair of 3D printed shoes that I already showed you guys. That's why I grabbed this shoe, and then I wore it to the Braille house, which is pretty cool to actually wear their shoe to their location. And it's actually a pretty comfortable shoe. Next up, we've got the Tim Staple collaboration. This shoe comes in this really nice dark brown, purple, and orange look. It's definitely got sort of a Halloween vibe to it, and this has actually become my standard winter boot whenever it snows this is what I rock it's a pretty good-looking shoe it's very comfortable and it's a silhouette that you don't get to see a lot of another shoe in my collection that really isn't that hyped is the Hoka Arahi 3 this is a running shoe that I wear semi regularly it's one of the older Hoka models but it's a pretty solid shoe great for stability and it's crazy lightweight just dropped it so there you go next up I've got the bodega on collaboration bodega actually sent me this like a month or two ago I have yet to wear it another reason why I'm getting rid of a lot of the sneakers in my collection because I just literally haven't worn some of them uh, but this is one of the shoes I haven't worn. On is a pretty crazy running brand. Bodega, as you guys know, is a brand that I absolutely love. Their collaborations are insane. This is probably not one of my favorite one of their collaborations, but that doesn't mean it's a bad sneaker. I think it's a good sneaker overall. I just don't wear a lot of On, so uh, probably not a shoe that I'm gonna lace up that often, but so cool to see that they collaborated with them. And honestly, a lot of the shoes in my collection, I'd say like, well actually, I have about 100 pairs in my collection, and I think, about 10 pairs of Bodega collaborations. Yo, 10% of my collection is Bodega. So yeah, shout out to Bodega for keeping me stocked. Keeping up with Bodega, we've got the Bodega Salomon collaboration, a great hiking sneaker. Again, one that I haven't had a chance to lace up yet. I haven't been hiking in a minute. Bodega kills it, like I said. I'm gonna say that a million other times throughout this video as I talk about Bodega shoes because they kill it. Another one, just kidding. No, another Bodega collaboration. We've got the Bodega Asics. This shoe is actually very clean. I wear this shoe a lot. Very, very clean sneaker. Really love the way that it looks. I'm not sure exactly which ASICS model this is, but very clean, very wearable, and the colorway is different, and I like it. Another pair of ASICS we've got in the collection are these Gel Light 3s. This is the Sneaker Freaker Atmos collaboration. They actually gave it to me at an event. Really clean looking sneaker. The materials are amazing. I absolutely love the suede that they used on this shoe, and uh, it's purple, and I love purple. Next up is another collab. This time around, it's the A Few Saucony collaboration. This shoe is pretty wild. I don't remember the exact inspiration behind the shoe, I know it's something to do with meth. Is it called the Time and Space or something like that? I forget the exact name of the shoe. It's the Shadow 5000 also, and this shoe has a crazy glow on the outsole. The first time that I wore the shoe, I was driving, and I'd, I guess, been in a lit room for a while, and I got in the car, and it was nighttime, and I was like, what the hell is that green light below my feet? And it turns out it was this, so. They killed it. So this next brand, I'm actually really surprised that I don't have more pairs of, at least in my house. I know I have pairs at the office, but uh, that's Puma. Surprisingly, this is the only pair that I had in my sneaker bins at the moment. A lot of pairs that I have are basketball pairs, like the uh, MB1s and stuff like that. And we have a basketball court right across the street from the office, so I bring them all there to play basketball whenever we play basketball, which is not that often. But this is the MCM Puma collaboration. This is a sample. It's got sample tags on the inside of the shoe. Very, very cool. Kind of a wild looking sneaker. Not one that I would really probably rock, but it's cool to have. It's cool that it's a sample. And uh, the materials used on this shoe are pretty pretty solid. So definitely a cool thing to have. But let's get to some Crocs really quick because, you know, it's 2022 and I have a bunch of Crocs in my collection, or at least three pairs, which is probably more than most people have. But the first pair that I've got is this KFC Croc that they sent me like two years ago. It's got this chicken nugget right there. Or chicken nugget. It's not, it's a chicken wing. But uh, it smells like chicken, or they tried to make it smell like chicken. It actually doesn't smell anything like chicken. It smells like um, cornflakes. And then of course, we've got the Salehi Bembury Pollux Crocs. This is actually probably one of my favorite collaborations of the last couple years. I'm a huge Salehi Bembury fan, and it was Salehi that made me really excited about Crocs because I definitely wasn't before this. And this collab is probably one of the most eye-catching but still good-looking collaborations that's dropped in a really long time. It's his fingerprint on a shoe, and it's made 3D, and it just looks like it's been grown. It's a super, super cool look, and I actually wear these pairs all the time. They're very comfortable, and they look awesome. So, killing it, Salehi, you're killing it. And then next up, we've got my Reeboks, and the first pair that I got is actually this pair that was just sent to me today. It's the Gary V Reebok collaboration. This is actually also a sample. Shout out to Gary V for sending over this insane sample. So this is his newest Reebok collaboration. I think this might be his first Reebok collaboration. It's a V Friends collab, and my favorite part of this shoe is the fact that they changed Reebok 
to Vibok right there. And then one of the most worn pairs in my collection are my Iversons. This is the two-way colorway, and I actually wear these to almost every Sixers game that I go to, and also just whenever I'm going out, because this shoe is fire. Iverson is one of the greatest basketball players to ever do it, and he's a Sixer. So shout out to the Sixers, shout out to Iverson, shout out to Reebok. Honestly, everyone's killing it in this collab. And I don't know how I almost forgot this, but the largest shoe in my collection, this size 22 Shaq Reebok, signed by Shaq right there on the toe. I actually only have one side of the pair because I think these were given out or you could buy them from uh, Shaq's Hall of Fame induction. And this is something that they used to commemorate that. Absolutely love this shoe. And if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could fit one of my actual shoes inside this shoe. Just for comparison, just to show you guys, let me find a pair of shoes that kind of look similar. Okay, it's not that similar, but a size nine Air Jordan 4 next to the, the Reeboks. It's a little ridiculous. Size 22 is, is huge. <laughs> as you guys can see. Next up, let's get into one of the brands that I have a bunch of sneakers of, and that's Adidas, or if you like to say it wrong, Adidas. And the first pair of Adidas that I have, just dropping it, are the Spring Blades, and they suck. So don't, don't try them. There's a reason why they stopped making these. Next up is a pair of 3D printed shoes. Actually, one of the first 3D printed shoes to hit the market, and that's the Adidas 4D. I actually grabbed this pair back when it first released in 2018. Super cool shoe, super cool concept, and I actually think it looks really, really great. Of course, you guys know me, I love Ultra Boost, and this is the Ultra Boost 1.0 in the triple white colorway, the pair that Kanye West first made famous back in 2015 or 16 by rocking a pair in a concert, and someone took this insane photo, and then everyone was hype on Ultra Boost. This is not the original release. I think this is from the, uh, the 2020 re-release or 2022? I don't remember, 2020. Next up is the Adidas Young One Arizona collaboration. I'm a huge Arizona Ice Tea fan. They actually sent me the whole collection back in 2017 or 2018 when this collaboration dropped. Also, another one of the shoes that they dropped from that same collaboration, it's got the Great Buy 99 cents right there in the top. And this is probably my favorite out of all the shoes that they dropped because this one's actually relatively wearable. After that, we've got the Adidas Boost You Wear 2s, and this is actually the Ubik Friends and Family colorway. Ubik is not even a brand anymore. I think Atmos actually bought them out. Love the black colorway, love all the uh, the detailing on the tongue. Super wild sneaker. I think the standard pair comes in white. That might be the only difference between the Friends and Family and the non-Friends and Family, but I'm not 100% sure. Next up is the Filthy Adidas NMD S1. Filthy has three L's in it. <laughs> shout out to Filthy, he's an insane artist. Absolutely kills it, and this is his official Adidas collaboration, so shout out to him for actually getting a crazy Adidas collab. You did a great job. Another Adidas NMDS1 collab that I have is the Ramoa collaboration. I actually unboxed this with the Filthies like a month ago, and it actually matches the backpack that they sent me to, so great to wear together. And then finally, the last NMDS1 that I have in my collection is this Friends and Family NMDS1 sort of ice blue colorway. It's a great looking sneaker, the first NMDS1 that I ever had. I think this might actually be the first NMDS1 to ever come out. I know it didn't drop, but it dropped at least to me, before the white colorway came out. So could be the first NMDS one, not sure. But it's friends and family, so that's super cool. So thank you Adidas for that. Keeping it in the family, we've got the Bodega Friends and Family Forum High collaboration. This shoe I believe only dropped as a friends and family exclusive, which is pretty wild. I got paired 230 out of uh, 333. Huge shout out to Bodega. Like I said, I'm gonna have like 10 pairs of Bodega sneakers. I think we've already gone through like four of them. Really appreciate that you guys consider me friends and family. It's pretty cool. I also think that this shoe is rarer than the recent Nike Dunk Friends and Family that they dropped. Like a year or two ago, I think after this collab, or maybe right before, I don't remember exactly when it happened, but after that, we've got three different sample Pharrell NMDs. I was fortunate enough to have Adidas send me all of these, which is pretty wild, so thank you Adidas for these. I actually had even more, but I gave them to some of my friends and family because I just couldn't wear them all. And these guys, I don't think I've actually worn other than for the video, mainly because I just don't want to rip off the sample tag. Like, that's so cool to me. Like, I really love the design process of sneakers, and so to have something that is part of the design process, something that the general public won't be able to have, is pretty rad. And for me, it's more of a collectible than anything else. So as cool as this is, and as much as I would like to wear this, I just, I'm gonna keep it on ice because I think it's even cooler to have like all the sample tags and things that go along with it. So yeah, love it. I know there's gonna be some people out there somewhere who are gonna give me crap because I didn't wear these, but uh, I think if you had these shoes, you probably wouldn't wear them either because this is pretty crazy. So don't give me crap, please. Appreciate it, thanks. Moving into our more um, controversial sneakers, which is kind of crazy. They're not really controversial, but obviously the artist who designed them is controversial. And that, of course, are our Yeezys. So I have two pairs of Yeezy slides, probably some of the most worn pieces of footwear that I have in my entire collection. I hope Adidas keeps making more of these, but I think Kanye actually owns the, uh, the patent for these. I think this is the one thing he owns the patent to, so we might not get any more of these. We'll see what happens. Of course, we've got one of my favorite shoes of the last couple years, the Foam Runners, a shoe which has been heavily, not copied, but definitely inspired a lot of other shoes out there, including 
including my skate shoe. A pretty insane looking sneaker. I know a lot of people think it looks ridiculous, but I think it looks awesome. It's very, very comfortable, surprisingly durable. And obviously I wear these guys because they are very dirty. Next up, we've got the 2022 re-release of the Yeezy 350 Turtle Dove, the very first Yeezy to drop with Adidas. Pretty wild sneaker. It's cool to have this pair because I was so into this pair for years when it first came out and I was never able to grab a pair of them. After that, we've got the Reflective Belugas, the guys that dropped, I think at the end of last year. And these are actually the only pairs of 350s that I have left in my collection. The, uh, the two original colorways. Well, I guess this isn't really an original colorway because it's reflective, but yeah, there you go. And then of course, the original Yeezy 700 V1 in the Wave Runner colorway. This is the pair that I actually got from the pre-order back in 2017. I still have them, still in pretty good condition too. I've worn them a lot. But from what I can tell, that is all my Adidas shoes at the moment. There might be some more in my closet somewhere or at the office that I just can't remember. I'm sure there are shoes that I'm missing in today's video. That just is what it is when you have too many pairs of sneakers. So I guess now let's move on to New Balance, my favorite brand at the moment. Okay, so starting off New Balance, we've got another Bodega collaboration, the Bodega New Balance X Racer. Now this shoe is an amazing hiking shoe. I've hiked in it a bunch. I actually hiked in this shoe on my bachelor party because instead of doing normal bachelor party things, we went hiking, which I actually really preferred. It's not everybody's thing, but I love hiking. So that's what we did. Next up is the New Balance 1080 V12. This is an incredible running sneaker. It's a max cushion shoe. The fresh foam on this sneaker is insanely soft underfoot. After that is the New Balance 990 V3s in this maroon colorway. It's one of the Teddy Santis colorways. I actually wear this shoe all the time. This is my literal everyday shoe. Um, me and my wife both have matching pairs of this shoe because I think it's fire. Great everyday sneaker. Teddy Santis has been absolutely killing it at New Balance. This is not a collab, but it is, um, I guess, one of the colorways that he's worked on. So shout out to Teddy. Next up is another classic, the New Balance 990 V5. This is just a, a great all around shoe. I don't have much to say about it because it's just like, it's a classic. So check it out if you haven't. Of course, the latest addition to the 990 lineup, we've got the 990 V6, probably my favorite new New Balance silhouette of the year. It looks great. I can't wait for some collaborations to drop on this shoe, like the uh, Action Bronson collab. After that, we've got the special edition made in the US 990 V3. It's got that special version three tag right there. It's kind of a special edition, but really it's just, it's the same as a standard pair of 990 V3s, except with the little red tag. And because of that, it's like $50 more expensive for the resale market. So there you go. Personally, if I didn't get this for retail, I would have just gone with the standard 990 V3. Next is one of my favorite New Balances of the last couple years, and it's actually not a collaboration. This is the New Balance 2002R. It's part of the protection pack. I believe this is the rain cloud colorway. And for a while, this shoe was going for like $1,000, which is mind blowing to me. I think you can actually grab this pair right now for like three or 400 bucks at most. It might even be less than that now, but I still think it's worth it. I mean, look how hairy that suede is. It's insane. Now, of course, it's time to get to some more Bodega collaborations. I've got like five different Bodega New Balances. In fact, I have exactly five different Bodega New Balances at this moment. And the first is of course the 997S. This is the second 997S Bodega collab to drop. The first one was very difficult to get and I'm not gonna pay $1,000 for it, but it's an awesome pair of sneakers. This one looks pretty solid as well. After that, we've got the other 997S that Bodega dropped with New Balance, the last one that they dropped with New Balance. This is the, uh, shoot, I forget the name of the shoe. I forgot the name of the other shoe too, but really great looking sneaker. And uh, yeah, this colorway is fire. I think out of the three that they dropped, this is my least favorite, but it's still a good looking shoe. After that, we've got the Bodega New Balance 990 V3s, probably my favorite 990 other than the 990 V6. The V3 is just such a good looking sneaker. And this Bodega collab is surprisingly clean for like sort of a greenish brown sneaker. I'm not usually a fan of this color, but they did their thing on this shoe. It looks really, really great. And then finally, the last Bodega New Balance that I have is the Bodega New Balance 9060. This is actually their latest collab. I think it just dropped like two or three days ago, at least at the time of filming this video. I have yet to wear this shoe, but uh, it's a pretty incredible looking sneaker. Bodega consistently knocks it out of the park with their collabs. As I said, dude, I just, I feel like this is a Bodega sponsor video. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Moving on to some other New Balance collaborations. We've got the New Balance 650Rs. This is the ALD collaboration. This is the gray and white colorway. A really great looking collaboration, very subtle, very understated. I love the sort of age look of the midsole and of course the cracked New Balance logo right there. And actually, if you guys wanna grab a brand new pair of New Balances right now, I've made sure to leave a pop-up on the screen that you can buy directly through YouTube. It's a crazy new feature. Click that link to check it out. After that, we've got one of my favorite New Balance collaborations of all time, and that's the New Balance ALD 550s in this green and yellow colorway. Probably the best colorway out of the ALD New Balance collabs, in my opinion. I think it's just super clean. It's colors you don't see a lot of on shoes, and uh, together also, it's pretty nicely done. So they knocked it out of the park. There's a reason why Teddy Santis is now the design director at New Balance because he does stuff like this. Next up is a shoe that's responsible for one of the most sus picks I've ever taken. And I regret it a lot because it got reposted by a bunch of sneaker blogs, but that of course is the New Balance 574. 
Uh, the Salehi Bembry collaboration with the whistle on the back. A silhouette that I think a lot of people really don't think of as a hyped up shoe because it's kind of the standard like everyday New Balance. But Salehi took that silhouette and turned it into something chunky and crazy and insane and added a whistle on the back, which is also pretty insane. After that is the first Salehi Bembry New Balance collaboration on the 2002R. This shoe looks amazing. This orange colorway is incredible. Of course, you've got Salehi's fingerprint on the back of the shoe. Absolutely love that detail and his name on the, uh, the top part of the tongue. It's stuff like this. It's the reason that New Balance is where it is right now. It's the collaborations. They're killing it. Moving into another one of my favorite collaborators, we've got Joe Fresh Goods and his 990 V3. It's just a really clean looking shoe. You've got the browns, the blues, it really pops. And because it's a 990 V3, it's incredibly comfortable. Then of course, we've got his latest collaboration with New Balance on the 993s. This is the blue colorway. I think there was three colorways that dropped, pink, blue, and green. I think I would have preferred having the pink colorway, but this blue colorway is also pretty clean. I've yet to wear it. But again, another banger from Joe Fresh Goods. He just keeps consistently knocking them out of the park. I really feel like Joe Fresh Goods and Salehi Bembry are like the next huge fashion designers, at least when it comes to sneakers. So shout out to them for killing it. I've met both of them. They're both incredible people. And uh, yeah, they make awesome shoes. And then finally, the last pair of New Balances in my collection, one of my favorite, if not my favorite pair of New Balances in my collection, and probably, well, definitely the rarest New Balance in the collection, but probably one of my rarest shoes in my collection. We've got the Anatomy of a Heart New Balance 992s. This is another Joe Fresh Goods collaboration. It's, I believe, his first collaboration with New Balance, at least that I'm familiar with. And uh, it's designed to look like the Anatomy of a Heart. It's incredible. It dropped during All-Star Weekend 2020. Like, this shoe just looks incredible. It's, it's bright red with these beautiful blue laces. Is. The material quality is amazing. It's a 992, incredible silhouette. Steve Jobs loved the 992. It's just an awesome all around sneaker. I've talked about this shoe so much, but yeah, I really love this sneaker. And this one will never leave my collection. Probably one of my favorite shoes in my entire collection. Okay, so now we move into a brand which I'm sure a lot of you guys were looking forward to. And that brand, of course, is Nike. And the first pair of Nikes, or I guess pairs of Nikes that I'm gonna show you guys, are the social status Nike Air Penny 2s, both the blue and cream colorway and the black and white colorway. Recently, the Air Penny 2s have been a pretty underrated silhouette and I feel like Social Status did a great job collaborating on this shoe. It still maintains some of the DNA of the original sneaker but infuses some Social Status in there which I thought was a nice touch. Next up is the Aunt Pearl KD6s, an incredible sneaker, an incredible story and actually my only pair of KDs in my collection. After that in my opinion is one of the best collaborations on a pair of Air Maxes in the last like three or four years and I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that. I think some people will but I don't think everyone will and that of course is the Pata Nike Air Max 1s. Now I actually think this is the best colorway out of all of the colorways and it's not just because it's the first colorway that dropped but because I feel like this orange just goes really well with this sort of wavy pattern. This collaboration didn't even change that much about the sneaker except for this panel right here and some color changes and I feel like just that really makes this feel like a completely new sneaker. That's why I love this collaboration so much. Pata just did a great job. I honestly feel like they've overdone it a bit with the colorways. I feel like they could have dropped like four colorways and that would have been enough but uh yeah out of all the colorways that have dropped this orange one is by far my favorite and again I think it's one of the best Air Max collaborations to drop in a very long time. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that because the next shoe is a Fire Air Max collaboration and that of course is the Sean Watherspoon Air Max 197s. This is probably one of the most iconic Air Maxes to ever drop. I believe it dropped in when? Was it 2018 was when the shoe dropped? Yeah, I think it was 2018. It was Air Max Day. I remember trying to grab the shoe in Air Max Day, running around New York trying to find a pair. I couldn't. I had to pay resale for this pair, but a really awesome pair of sneakers that uh, is absolutely hyped up. Next is the Supreme Nike Lunar One Plus, I think is the name. I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but an insane collaboration, really underrated. And this shoe was actually given to me by DJ Big Boy Chang. And again, incredible shoe. It's insanely comfortable. It looks really good, but it's also insanely underrated. Like it's a Supreme collab, you'd be surprised. I think this shoe does resell for like 1500 bucks, but no one really knows about it, which is crazy. After that, we get into some off-whites that were designed by one of the most influential designers of the last couple decades. Probably one of the most influential sneaker collaborators or sneaker designers of all time. And that, of course, was Virgil Abloh. And this is the Neon Off-White Air Force One or the Volt Off-White Air Force One. I don't remember the exact name of it, but really insane looking sneaker. It's a shoe that I didn't think I was gonna like. And I found a pair uh, for my wife in the Philippines at the Off-White store and I saw her wearing them and she made them look so good. I was like, gotta get a pair for myself. So now we can match whenever we're rocking these shoes. And this is a shoe that I've actually worn a lot, even though you wouldn't think that it would go with a lot. It doesn't. But uh, that might be the reason why it's so easy to wear because you just you can't even try to match with this shoe. You just kind of have to rock it. Another absolutely insane off-white collaboration that I've worn a bunch is, of course, the original off-white Nike Air Prestos. This shoe, surprisingly, is still 
is still somehow surviving even though I've worn this shoe so so much and the way the Virgil deconstructed this shoe it just works so well on the silhouette it's just such a well thought out collaboration that looks incredible it's also insanely comfortable and I mean come on you can't go wrong with a pair of off-white Prestos especially the OG off-white Prestos next is the Pro Tro Kobe 6 Grinch this is the 2020 re-release of the shoe or I guess remake of the shoe one of the most classic Kobe colorways of all time and honestly one of the last really great Christmas Nike basketball sneakers to ever release and obviously Kobe is one of the greatest basketball players to ever do it so this is probably one of the greatest colorways of one of the greatest basketball players signature sneakers so really happy to have this guy so I think we finally made it to the last pair of bodegas in my collection and that is the bodega Nike dunks now this shoe was designed to look like I believe a baseball glove or something like that it's a pretty wild looking sneaker yeah it's got that sort of like cobbled together vibe which I actually really like it's not the easiest shoe to wear but it's definitely a cool collaboration it's also probably not my favorite bodega collaboration I think um well they've got so many good ones that uh I think this one's just overshadowed Next up are the Diamond Supply Co. Nike SB Dunk Highs in the Tiffany colorway. Obviously, the lows are the one that everyone wants, but the highs are also pretty rad. This color combo is just so iconic for sneakers. Now, it does suck, though, that during this era of Nike Dunks and SBs, the leather that they used was just so stiff that this shoe is just a pain in the butt to wear. Like, it really, really hurts. I wore it last week, and it was just killing the circulation in my toes. Speaking of shoes that hurt, we've got the Supreme Nike SB Dunk Lows in the Red Elephant Print colorway. This shoe is from 2012, I think, or 2011. One of the most iconic supreme collaborations with Nike and again the leather on this shoe it just it's it's just so stiff this shoe kills my feet I don't know how people skateboarded in this shoe it's crazy to me but really cool looking sneaker I love the bright red obviously if you're a supreme fan you're gonna love this sneaker but uh yeah one of the more iconic Nike SB dunks Definitely a cool shoe to have, so love this shoe. Moving into the Nike Dunks, we've got the Court Purple Nike Dunks that just recently released. I grabbed these to replace my Court Purple Air Jordan 1s, which I'm pretty sure were cursed, and every time I wore them, the Ravens would lose. It could also be that that was, you know, a, just a bad year for us, but I think Lamar got the MVP that year, so it wasn't that bad of a year. We just, you know, lost a couple playoff games. Actually, not a great couple of years, but regardless, cool looking sneaker. I really like this shoe a lot. The purple is very clean, very easy to rock if you're a Ravens fan. You know, if you're not a purple fan, you're probably not gonna like this shoe very much, but definitely a clean, simple Nike Dunk. Another one of those simple, clean Nike Dunk colorways is the Syracuse colorway. This pair I've actually worn a bunch, but just a really crazy colorway. I don't have a lot of orange shoes, but if you love the original Scholastic, not Scholastic, Scholastic Collegiate pack. I don't remember the name of it. If you're a fan of that pack and uh, you want the low top version of one of those shoes, this is a great way to go. Then rounding off the specifically Nike sneakers before we get into Jordan brand, we've got a shoe which kind of bridges the gap between the two companies. And that of course is the Nike Airship, the shoe that Michael Jordan wore before the Air Jordan one came out. And funnily enough, it's one of my orange sneakers. But of course, getting into Jordans, we've got the Jordan Westbrook 01. I had this shoe customized at a Jordan brand event. It was actually customized by a Jew working on projects, an amazing artist who actually did the same custom on a pair that Russell Westbrook has. And actually, no one else has that same exact custom. So me and Russell Westbrook have the same shoe, which is pretty wild. When you hold the shoes together, it says, why not? Next up, we've got the Jordan 30s, which is actually the very first shoe I ever reviewed on the channel. In fact, it's the very first video that I ever dropped on the channel. Now, it wasn't this exact pair. I had to go and buy a pair when I hit a million subs because I wanted to have this shoe just because it's kind of nostalgic. Honestly, not that special of a shoe, but the fact that it was the first shoe that I ever did a video on uh, makes it special to me. So that's the reason why it's in my collection. And that's actually the only reason why it's in my collection. Otherwise, I probably would never care about this shoe or think about this shoe ever again. After that, we've got a pretty crazy package that I got from Jordan Brand back in like 2017, I think. And the reason I'm showing you guys this now is because it's got like a Jordan 32 in it, which is one of the newer Jordans in my collection. This is the Gatorade package. I dropped a video on it again, I think back in 2017. I think Cousteau dropped a video as well. I think my video got like 30,000 views and his got like you know, 4 million views, which, you know, fair, it makes sense. His channel is better than mine, so I understand. I'm not salty at all, Jacques. But the reason I'm showing you guys this box is because inside this box came the Air Jordan 32 Gatorades. And then also inside this box, we had the Gatorade 6s, which uh, look a lot like the Carmines, but um, they come in orange. So there you go, another orange shoe in my collection. So I guess at this point, we should take a nice mosey down the list of Air Jordan sneakers from the highest number that I have to the lowest. Obviously, we've already talked about the 32s and the 30s. I actually have some like, I think I have what, the 30? fours, 35s. I have a lot of Jordans at the office again. The basketball Jordans, I just forgot to bring them here. So you're not going to get to see those, but they're newer. You probably don't care about those. So let's start things off with the 2016 Air Jordan 12 Flu Games, a shoe which I grabbed for retail, then wore it a bunch, and then sold it, and then just recently traded for it um, because I really wanted it back. It's not really a shoe I'm planning to wear that much, but as you guys know, I'm trying to build like a full clock of uh, all the original Air Jordan colorways. I'm doing it for the $20 sneaker collection, and I'm also doing it personally for myself. I want them all in my size that I can actually wear. I can't wear all of the shoes from the $20 sneaker collection clock. So I actually might also put that up in the apothecary office. So I might not even have 
those pairs. So yeah, had to grab the Flu Game 12s. Really iconic sneaker, although it does wear like a boot. Like you're really, it, it gets hot. Next up, we've got the Concord 11s, one of the original Air Jordan 11 colorways and one of the best Air Jordan 11s. Just a really iconic sneaker that I need to wear more, honestly. I've worn it a couple times, but um, as you guys can see, after what, like two or three years of this shoe being out, it's already starting to yellow. And then next up, my favorite colorway of the Air Jordan 11, we've got the Bread 11s. Now I actually have two pairs of these. I have my personal pair that I wear and then the pair that we have for the $20 sneaker collection. Just an incredible looking sneaker. One of the most classic and iconic sneakers out there and uh, my favorite Air Jordan 11. Moving into the 10s, we've got the Steel 10s. This is the pair from the $20 sneaker collection I wanted to show you guys because I just really like this shoe and I might steal it for myself. We'll see what happens. OG Air Jordan 10 colorway. I don't think this colorway is retroed in a while, so it would be nice if Jordan Brand brought this colorway back, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'm sure they will. They're just gonna make us wait much longer than we should. Next up are the Soulfly 10s, a shoe which reminds me a lot of the Linen 10s, but honestly, as you guys can see, is better quality than those shoes. Really great collaboration, pretty understated. I think it dropped during the Last Dance documentary. Cool looking shoe, hit it for retail. Kind of crazy because you know, anything Soulfly tends to sell like crazy. Next up is another shoe from the $20 sneaker collection, the Infrared 6s. Not my size, pretty beat. I wish I had my size and a pair that wasn't beat. Moving into the fives, ironically, we have five pairs of fives. The first is, of course, the Fire Red 5s, one of the OG uh, Air Jordan 5 colorways. Again, from the $20 sneaker collection series, a really fun series where I just go thrifting to find sneakers. And yeah, bought this with uh, some money from that series. Next up, we've got the Off-White 5s, a really great shoe, which is actually one of the most comfortable pairs of Air Jordan 5s ever. And the reason for that is that they changed the material on the upper, so it's sort of this rip stop, which is super soft, and they took down some of the padding, so it's not as bulky as it usually is. So it's very wearable, it kind of fits like a sock, which is crazy to say about an Air Jordan 5. Yeah, Virgil killed it with this one, I absolutely love it. I wish he had dropped more colorways of these. Obviously, we've got one other colorway, but more colorways would have been nice. After that, we've got the Bel Air 5s, a shoe which I thought I was gonna wear a lot more, and then after realizing what it looks like in real life, um, I, it's just hard to wear. <laughs> Now the reason I grabbed this is because I'm based in Philly, very Philly themed sneaker and also back when the shoe first dropped in 2013, I camped out overnight to grab it at Ubik on a chestnut. Or was it Walnut? I think it was Walnut. Cool sneaker. Ironically, I didn't actually grab a pair when I camped out. I had to wait for five years and then pay resale. So that's how I grabbed my pair. After that is actually a sample pair of Air Jordan 5 Dornbeckers. This shoe has a pretty incredible story. I really love the fact that Nike drops yearly collections with some of the children from the Dornbecker Children's Hospital. It's very, very cool to see. And I love it. It's an incredible, incredible sneaker. And uh, yeah, my favorite Dornbecker. And then the final pair of Air Jordan 5s in the collection is actually right back there. And it, of course, is the Tokyo 5s, a shoe which I actually won for free at ComplexCon with Hess Kicks while he was wearing his uh, Tokyo 5s, which is crazy. Super cool story. Check out the vlog. I don't remember when it's from, like 2019 probably. I somehow got for free and it was not YouTube related. I just won a raffle. So very, very cool and a shoe that I cherish and have worn. But unfortunately, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the studio lights or whatever, but the left shoe is definitely more washed out than the right shoe. So it looks like a slightly less vibrant shade of yellow, which is kind of a bummer. Sucks, but that's what happens with like 10 year old pairs of shoes. They they wear. Oh shoot, actually, I completely forgot. We do have one pair of Air Jordan 8s, and that's the Oregon Duck Air Jordan 8 PEs that I got off of a, a GOAT raffle earlier this year. This is the uh, the GOAT exclusive Oregon PE, and it's a pretty wild looking colorway that I can't really see myself ever wearing. But it's still honestly really cool to have a pair of Oregon Duck PEs. It's a shoe that I'm gonna be honest, I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna keep it because I did pay resale for it. I think I got a better price than uh, I would've if I hadn't done it through the raffle. But still, very cool to have an Oregon PE, a shoe which I never thought I'd have. All right. Moving into the Air Jordan 4s, the first shoe that we've got are the White Cement 4s from 2016. Pretty incredible pair. I wish they would retro this pair and not give us Midnight Navies. Like, I don't want that, I want the original. But at least the last pair that we got did have the Nike Air, so that's a plus. After that, we've got the 2020 Fire Red 4s, one of the OG Air Jordan 4 colorways, again with the Nike Air. I've worn this shoe probably once or twice. I need to wear it more, but like I said earlier on in the video, I just have too many sneakers, I can't wear them all. <laughs> that's why I'm getting rid of them. And then finally, the last pair of 4s in the collection are the Amo Manier 4s, a shoe which a lot of people may consider to be sneaker of the year. I think it's top five, maybe not top one, but definitely top five. Great looking sneaker, really cool story behind it, and the colorway is fire. Moving into the threes, we've got the fire red threes, which is a lot dirtier than I th thought it was going to be. I wonder, I hope that's not poop. Next, we've got the Black Cement threes, my favorite Air Jordan three of all time. Really, really love this sneaker. I wish I had bought two pairs back in 2018 when it dropped, but unfortunately I didn't. I'd love to have another pair on ice, but I don't. And I really don't know when they're gonna retro this shoe again. They are retroing the white cement threes as a reimagined pair. 
uh, I think in February or March of next year, but not the Black Cement threes. I'd love to see these guys come back. And then finally, the last pair of threes in my collection are the Amamanier threes, a sneaker which is definitely sneaker of the year, the year that it dropped. I can't believe I don't remember what year that was. Was that last year? It was last year. Yes. Sneaker of the year 2021. <laughs> Moving down the list, we've got the OG Air Jordan twos from this year. These actually still have yet to drop. They drop on December 30th. A really incredible reimagining or remake of the original Air Jordan twos, designed to look just like the original version of the shoe, not like the newer versions of the Air Jordan twos that we've gotten over the last 30 some years. Beautiful looking sneaker. Again, I feel like the Air Jordan 2 is pretty underrated. I'm not the biggest Air Jordan 2 fan, and obviously it's not as pretty as some of the other Air Jordans that have been out there, but still a great looking sneaker. And if you have a chance to grab this shoe when it drops, highly recommend it. And then finally, the last pair of twos in my collection are these off-white Air Jordan 2 lows in the Chicago colorway. One of the most interesting collaborations that Virgil Abloh ever did. He did some really cool stuff on this shoe. You had the cracked midsole that's sort of like a, a resin midsole. You've got the, uh, the Michael Jordan signature right there on the side. Not so much a prototype look like some of his previous collaborations, but more of an homage to classic Air Jordan sneakers. This shoe was obviously designed to look like a pair of game-worn Air Jordan 2s that have been cracked over the last uh, 30 plus years of sitting in storage somewhere. And it's a very, very cool concept. Unfortunately though, because of the way that they did this midsole, it's a little stiff underfoot, but I don't really wear this shoe too much just because, well, mainly because it's stiff. But very cool sneaker nonetheless, and Virgil just, again, did his thing on this collaboration. He really, really killed it. But now we're getting into my favorite silhouette of all time, and that, of course, is the Air Jordan 1. And I feel like we gotta start off my favorite silhouette with one of my favorite collaborations on that silhouette, and that, of course, is the Fragment Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low. This shoe is incredible. I love this sneaker. Now, I'm not the biggest Travis Scott fan. I like his music, it's fine, whatever. But his collaborations on the Air Jordan 1s have been pretty solid. And I feel like this is just the perfect mashup of two incredible collaborators working together. You've got Fragment and of course their Fragment Air Jordan 1 color scheme which is a shoe that has evaded me for years and I'll probably never grab but I would love to grab a pair of the Fragment 1s. And then of course you've got the backward Nike swoosh from Travis and of course some other Travis details throughout the sneaker but just a really really incredible collaboration. The colorway on this shoe is super clean. I love the aged midsole. I love the cream color used on the uh, backwards Nike swoosh. In my opinion this is the best Travis Scott collaboration to ever drop. I know people won't agree with me on that 100% but this is fire. Continuing on with Travis we've got the very first Travis Scott Air Jordan 1. A pretty clean sneaker, one of the most faked sneakers of all time. I grabbed my pair from StockX, so you know there's no way to know for sure if this pair is real. I'm assuming that it is. I actually have had it legit checked since by a couple different people, so my pair in theory should be legit. Still a really clean sneaker. I love the way that this shoe looks. Honestly, I don't wear this shoe enough, and again, Getting rid of some sneakers should fix that problem, so we'll see if it happens. After that, in my opinion, we've got one of the best releases of 2022, and that, of course, is the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Georgetowns. I love what Jordan Brand has been doing recently, where they remake silhouettes to look just like the original, because as we all know, over the last 30 plus years of Jordan Brand making sneakers, the silhouettes slowly change over time. It's not intentional, but it's something that happens. Like, if you look at Air Jordan 1s now versus Air Jordan 1s from 1985, they look different because manufacturing has just changed over the last 30 years. So it's really nice to see Jordan Brand create a version of their silhouette that's designed to look just like the original. Like the patterns used for the upper of the shoe are new, they're completely different, and they're based off the original version of the shoe. The midsole of the sneaker has been completely retooled, and the overall fit of the shoe fits just like the original Air Jordan 1. It's crazy. Now surprisingly, this is not an original Air Jordan 1 colorway. This is a colorway, I believe, based off of a PE. But regardless, it's very clean, it's very wearable, and this is probably my favorite 85 version of an Air Jordan 1, until they release like a brand Red Jordan 185. Next up, we've got a pretty coveted sneaker, and that's the Shattered Backboard 1s from 2016. Actually, 2015. They were 2015. I thought they were 2016, but no, they were 2015. Widely considered to be one of the best quality Air Jordan 1s ever made. I, I will say that the leather is softer than standard Jordan 1s, and I guess it does seem better quality than most other Jordan 1s. I mean, Jordan 1s in general are not like the best quality sneakers in the world. Like, the leather that they use on Jordans, it's mass-produced leather. It's not going to be that great. But regardless, it's still a great feeling shoe, a great looking shoe. This is the kind of orange that I love. It's like sort of washed out. It's not too bright, but it's still very wearable. But great looking sneaker overall and probably one of my favorite shoes in my collection. Next up, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Black Toes. This pair actually was from 2016 and I actually hit this shoe on the sneakers app, which is crazy. But yeah, this shoe is an incredible colorway. It's one of the original Air Jordan 1 colorways. And even though I haven't been storing this shoe in the box, it's still gotten the sparkles on the side, which is very frustrating, but a really incredible looking sneaker. Another shoe that I feel like doesn't get enough love, even though it's an OG colorway. But yeah, just another iconic 
iconic Air Jordan 1. I feel like most Air Jordan 1s are iconic, at least most of the ones in my collection, because I mainly only buy like the OGs or the collaborations that I like or just the simple colorways that I like. But yeah, so I guess I could have just said I buy Air Jordans that I like, and I happen to like iconic looking Air Jordan 1s. After that, we've got the Union LA Air Jordan 1s. We've got the Storm Blue colorway and the Black Toe colorway. I actually proposed to my wife in the Storm Blue colorway. And then of course you got the Black Toes, which I think overall colorway wise, might be a easier to rock colorway, but I've got so many good memories in this shoe. I, I don't know, I still like this one more, but this is still a very clean sneaker. And uh, I think Union LA is collaborating again with Jordan Brand on a pair of Air Jordan 1s this year or next year, but I think it's gonna be a KO and not a uh, standard Air Jordan 1, which is kind of a bummer. But I guess I'm still happy that Union LA is collaborating with Jordan Brand on a one and not a different silhouette. After that, of course, we've got my Air Jordan 1 Chicago's. We've got the Lost and Founds on the right, my right, probably your left. And then of course the 2016 Chicago's, which I actually think I might prefer because I like that it looks a lot more like the original, but unfortunately neither one of these are like the 85s where they actually do look like the original. But uh, both really cool sneakers. It's nice to have the Chicago's back. I have to say that the Lost and Founds are probably one of the best examples of great packaging that I've seen from Jordan Brand in a really long time. The whole story behind this sneaker, even though yes, is kind of ironic because the story behind this shoe is that a store owner from a small mom and pop shop stored this shoe in their basement for like 30 years and then someone found it. And it's ironic because Jordan Brand is trying to put those stores out of business. <laughs> so it's funny that they're paying homage to that, but regardless, it's a very cool sneaker. I like a lot of the surface textures that they added with like the cracked leather. I love the packaging on the shoe. I like the aged colored midsole. Obviously I wore my pair a bunch. It's already almost wearing through to the midsole on this shoe. In my opinion, this is sneaker of the year. This is definitely gonna be my number one on the list, not to ruin the video for you guys, cause this is gonna drop before that video, but regardless, you guys all saw it coming, so awesome sneaker. Then after that, we've got the 2018 Shadow Ones, which I'm just noticing now are also getting the sparkles on them. Man, it's happening to every one of my Jordan 1s. That is such a bummer. Very clean sneaker. I've said that about every pair of Jordan 1s that I have, but I wouldn't have them if I didn't think they were clean. Actually, there is one pair that I don't think is that clean. Let me show you guys really quick. I actually completely forgot about it. So inside this concrete box that I used to cover up my vent back there in the back of the studio, we've got a pair of Flyknit Air Jordan 1s that Jordan Brand sent me. I actually haven't opened this box since like last year's sneaker collection video, so that's why it's so difficult to open. And inside this box, we've got the Flyknit Bread 1s, a shoe that I don't think ever needed to be made. I don't think it's a bad sneaker. I feel like it was good for its time. It was very breathable. It's of course my favorite colorway on a pair of sneakers, but the Flyknit just didn't look that great on the Jordan 1. And I don't know, this shoe just kind of came out when Jordan brand was at a low point, And I guess they were trying to uh, sort of like revive the hype and uh, this shoe is not the answer. Again, I don't think it's a bad shoe. I just don't think it's that great of a shoe. And if I hadn't gotten this directly from Jordan brand, I probably would not have bought this shoe myself, but there you go. We're being super honest in today's video, apparently. I actually think when I first got that shoe and reviewed it, I was like really stoked on it, but I think it was like a mix of being really stoked that Jordan Brand actually sent me something. I think that was like the first thing that they ever sent me. I was just really hype on Bread 1, so of course I was gonna love the shoe. But now, like six years later, I'm over it. It's not that great of a shoe. <laughs> After that, we've got the Royal Ones, another incredible Air Jordan 1 colorway. The blue just pops. I used to have a second pair of these on ice, but I ended up just recently selling them because it was crystallizing and I was just never gonna wear it. So, awesome shoe. I need to wear this one more as well. And then of course, we get to my favorite sneaker of all time, and that is the Bread Ones. Now this shoe, I do have another pair on ice because I love this shoe so much. I actually had three pairs and I sold the third pair back in 2017 or 18 because I needed money for rent. And uh, yeah, this pair has definitely seen better days. I have not yet busted out the second pair because I want to save it. It is also getting crystals on it, but you know what? It's my favorite shoe of all time. I'm fine with it. I'll just wear it. I don't care what it looks like, but um, yeah, really great sneaker. And then after that, we've got the Off-White Air Jordan 1 UNCs. Probably my third favorite Off-White Air Jordan 1. I think that white European colorway might be my second. I remember when these shoes dropped, I went to a Jordan brand event and I saw one sitting there. We couldn't buy them, but we could like look at them and take pictures and stuff. And I just sat at the event the whole time, just like filming B-roll of it and then going to other shoes for like a second, but then going back to this shoe. So it does bring back a lot of good memories. And I do actually wear this shoe. And then of course, saved it till last my favorite sneaker in my entire collection and that is the signed off-white Air Jordan 1s from the time that I met Virgil Abloh. One of the most honestly pivotal moments in my career both for YouTube and also just for design like meeting a legend like that was truly like it was life-changing it's crazy to say but it was true at the time it just felt like I was meeting like a really cool guy but looking back on it now like if it wasn't for meeting him I don't know if I would have ever tried to design sneakers because at the time even though I was a designer I didn't want to design sneakers it just wasn't that exciting to me I wanted to keep sneakers separate like a hobby that I didn't really think about uh, when I was off work, but just seeing someone do some really incredible, inspiring sneaker design really changed my mind about that. And also the video that this shoe, actually the two videos that this shoe allowed me to do and meeting Virgil allowed me to do, both the review of this shoe and also the vlog of meeting Virgil, 
really skyrocketed my channel. At the time, I think I had like 20 or 30,000 subscribers, and because of those videos, I hit 100K, and from there, I mean, what well, happened just at the right time because I got fired like literally like a month after. So <laughs> if I wasn't at 100K, I don't know if when I got fired, doing YouTube full time would have been something I would have considered. I probably would have just looked for another job. But because of the position that I was in at the time, because of these videos and because of meeting Virgil, I was able to make this a career. So. I mean, truly, he had an impact on me that I don't think he ever knew. And honestly, I don't think I even realized how much of an impact it was until recently. So really just a really important pair of sneakers um, for me, both because it's just an incredible looking pair of shoes, but also it means a lot to me. And the experience I had meeting Virgil makes this shoe the most important shoe in my collection and one that I will always cherish. And I know I always get sappy at the end of these sneaker collection videos because I always save the shoe to last because it's my favorite shoe. But uh, yeah, truly incredible sneaker, yeah. Never gonna get rid of these. You know what though? I'm not gonna end the video with those because I know you guys are probably wondering, where are the Dior's? And I had a whole video planned because, you know, trading away the Dior's was something that uh, was a pretty big deal, but I did it for a reason. And uh, unfortunately, the reason that I traded them has still not panned out yet. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to keep it still a mystery why I don't have the Dior's anymore, but hopefully in the next, you know, couple weeks, months, maybe even years, I can show you guys why I got rid of them and what I'm using the uh, the money for. But can't uh, can't happen right now. So honestly, probably should have held on to them so I could have showed you guys in the video. Hey, look, I got the Dior's. They're pretty crazy. Most expensive shoe in my actually the Off Whites might be the most expensive shoe in the collection, but the Dior's would be a close second. But guys, that pretty much wraps up my entire sneaker collection. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to hit up my Whatnot live stream that's happening this upcoming week if you guys want to grab any of the shoes from my collection. It's gonna be crazy and. Uh, uh, maybe I'll do a video after that whatnot live stream to show you guys what I have left because hopefully it'll be a lot less But realistically, it's probably gonna still be like 50 pairs of shoes. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know But again, thank you all so much for watching if you're still watching to the end of the video comment Cheesesteak in the comment section down below because I just had one earlier. It was awesome That's actually the reason I was able to do this video. It fueled me What a bad way to end the video